Welcome to a very special episode of Brain in a Vat. In our last episode, we interviewed Stephen Kirshner about sexual taboos. Clips of that episode have gone viral online. They were picked up by a channel on Twitter called Libs of TikTok. And one of those clips has received over a million views and has since been syndicated on mainstream news channels, including uh, Fox News and channels in New York State. The controversy around that episode and that clip was also picked up by Daily News and by The Light Reports. And we thought that it was important for us to talk in some detail about that controversy. The overwhelming controversy is around Stephen Kirshner's view on pedophilia, which is the thought experiment he uses at the start of our show. You probably know at the start of every show, we encourage a guest to give a thought experiment and he starts with a thought experiment about an adult having sex with a, a 12 year old girl. And Stephen asks a fundamental question, which is the kind of question that philosophers ask, which is why exactly do we think that this activity is wrong? And then for the remainder of the episode, he goes through a number of reasons that people commonly give for why pedophilia is wrong, and he finds those reasons unconvincing. Both Mark and I object to Stephen throughout the episode, as we do with all of our guests. And even though we don't agree with what Stephen's position ultimately comes to, we still think it's very important that Stephen is allowed to explore these views, and we think that's a very valuable exercise. Yeah, so we think that the nature of academic freedom is that you've got to protect those things which are controversial. People that claim that the earth is geoid shaped don't require the protections of, of, of academic freedom. It's the people who say things that are uncontroversial that push the line and they might be wrong all the time. But one of the values of being wrong is that you give people a reason to consider their own views. John Stuart Mill said that one of the reasons for allowing speech is one, you might hold a false view and be corrected by someone who holds the true view. And the other one is that you don't want your view to become a dead dogma, that you just believe it without reason. And I think the challenge of Stephen's work is to give people these extreme cases so that they can question their underlying intuitions. Part of his project, from what I understand it as well, is to explore moral theory in uh, many different ways and through thought experiments. We had him to talk about sexual taboos, and he talks about a number of sexual taboos, but he has also written about other areas where people have a very strong moral commitment. So for example, most people think that slavery is wrong. They think that torture is wrong. They think that American soldiers who die in battle deserve our gratitude. And Stephen has written on all these topics and taken the devil's advocate line on them. But the value of that is so that people can understand why they hold that view. And we think that's important. And we don't think that it's right for someone who expresses that view to be sanctioned by being fired by the university. And there are many threats that he's faced along those lines. It's also very important to note that Stephen has quite a nuanced view on this. So he's published work saying that pedophilia should be illegal. And yet he's at the same time saying that we need to understand precisely why. And some of the common reasons that are given aren't convincing enough. So Stephen is pushing us to understand why we hold such strong views on certain things. And that is really at the heart of analytic philosophy as it's applied to applied ethics and our values in our everyday lives. So we support Stephen in that project. But what has happened instead is, is that Stephen has faced abuse. He's faced death threats. His job is being threatened. People are calling for him to lose his job and for him to be canceled. Most of these calls for his cancellation have come from the right. And the right is generally opposed to cancel culture because cancel culture has generally been practiced on the left. And this has been made into a partisan issue. Philosophy is a nonpartisan practice unless it's very explicitly in favor or against the left or the right. And we encourage people to watch the video in its entirety and see that left or right, you can agree or disagree with anything Stephen says without committing to him being of a particular political persuasion. Yes, we have tried on the show as much as we can to host people who hold a variety of different positions. So we have had Kathleen Stock on the show to talk about the nature of sex and gender which would have angered many people on the left. We have had someone like Mark Lance, who is very firmly on the left. He is an anarcho-communist. We've had Michael Humer, who is a staunch libertarian capitalist. We've had different views on free will, on a range of different topics in philosophy. And what we've tried to do is have these engagements in a way that is civil and polite, 
while disagreeing virulently. Our approach is to first of all try and understand what it is that our guests hold, which particular view they're espousing. And once we understand the position, to then put forward the strongest objections that we can think of in that moment to try and test the view. And we think that's an important um, role to play. We also do it in a long form. So our show is an hour long. We know that particular episode which we released on Brain of Bat has received some traction, but it's nowhere near the million views that the, the minute and a half are on, on Twitter has, has received. And I think part of that is that the nature of that engagement has been shallow. So many people commenting on Twitter have, instead of engaging with any of the arguments, have resorted to abuse, to allegations that Stephen is a pedophile, when in fact he has no such desires whatsoever, um, and many anti-Semitic claims as well, which we found rather distasteful. We are happy to say that on our channel, the comment section tends to be quite well thought out, that people engage in sophisticated philosophical disagreement with each other. And that's something that we totally encourage. We think people ought to disagree with each other to try and find out what is actually true. And we are a bit saddened by the fact that we have seen some quite abusive comments uh, on the channel that we prefer not to see. Mark and I both strongly believe in academic freedom and freedom of speech. We both believe that people should be allowed to say whatever they want to say on our channel, barring actual hate speech that causes imminent violence to a group of people. We've never hosted anyone on the show that utters such, such speech on our show. And we welcome anyone onto the show who's both a professional philosopher with a well-reasoned view. And Stephen Kirshner definitely satisfies those conditions. He has long form work on this that he's published over many years. He has a book on pedophilia that he published in 2015. He argues the way an analytic philosopher should argue, even if you disagree with his conclusions. So we encourage you to listen to our episodes in their entirety and engage with Stephen's arguments if you disagree with him. Furthermore, the next episode that we will be airing will be with Stephen. The episode is on abortion. Stephen has very unusual views on the topic. He doesn't express an overtly pro-life or pro-choice view, but tries to tease out the implications for both sides. Uh, and he does so in a way that is unconventional, but very entertaining. And uh, we hope that you enjoy that episode.